Hello everyone. I hope you guys are all having a great day so far. So today's video is going to be a huge Q&A all about Disneyland. So I get so many DMs from you guys every single time I go with Riley. So I figured this would be a really helpful video for you guys. Some tips and tricks that I've learned and that I can share with you. So without further ado, make sure to give the video a thumbs up and comment down below if you have any other questions that I don't cover in here so that way I can hop into the comment section and reply to you guys there to help out even more. Let's go ahead and get on into it. All right, so first off, before we get into the Q&A portion, I do wanna say a big thank you to Dime Beauty for sponsoring this portion of the video. I am so excited to be working with them. As you guys know, it is getting to be the summertime where we are gonna be constantly on the go and I've got the perfect skincare set for you guys. I have been really loving it. I've been using it now for a while and it has done wonders for my skin and I love that in this TLC bundle that you can get from Dime Beauty, you can get everything that you need. So if you wanna save 20% off, my code is Madison20, but there is also a link down below that you can click and it will automatically add it when you're purchasing the products, but they have even more products on their website, but I'm gonna go through the TLC bundle, the ones that I've been using, and talk a little bit about it with you guys. Quick little overview of Dime Beauty, if you've never seen them before. This is what their packaging looks like right here. I love it, it's so aesthetically pleasing. Plus, I love the glass packaging, it's eco-friendly. Also, if you have sensitive skin, like these products are totally for you. What's great about them is that they're fragrance-free, so they're not gonna irritate your skin. They have clean ingredients, they are vegan and cruelty free. So definitely recommend checking them out. And then also on all US orders over $49, you'll get free shipping. So going into the TLC bundle, there's a bunch of products that you get in there. And the first one that I use is the Gentle Jelly Cleanser. I use this in the morning and the nighttime. It's really nice, has a good, great pump to it. I love this because it's very simple cleanser. It does not strip your skin and your skin does not feel dry after using it, which is a plus for me. And then next up, morning and night, I use the Super Skin Toner. I use it on a reusable cotton round and I just kind of press this all over my skin. This is great because it's going to restore the pH balance and prep your skin for the remaining skincare products. Another plus to this, it has the CoQ10 in it. So this is really going to help battle any fine lines or wrinkles. Okay, so next up in the bundle, there are two serums that you get. So I have one that I use in the morning and I have one that I use at night that really works well for me. I use the Hyper Glow in the morning. This one's really going to brighten up your skin. So I love using this in the morning because I think it looks beautifully under makeup. It just makes my skin look awake and brightened. And then at nighttime, I use the Hyaluronic Acid Serum. And this one is going to just plump your skin up like crazy. It's going to add in so much hydration into it, which is why I really love it at night. So that way my skin just, just like soak it in and it feels very balanced and moisturized in the morning. So after that, in the morning time, I will go in with the Dewy Day Cream. This is an amazing moisturizer. What I love about this one here, I'm actually gonna use a little bit on here. You can kind of see it. It really moisturizes the skin, but I love it that it's nice and thin and lightweight. So it actually preps your face really well for makeup and it pairs really well with all foundations. So it's just really nice, lightweight moisturizer that gives you the perfect amount of moisture but is not gonna make you feel like an oil slick and have your makeup move all around. So I love that. And then at nighttime, I use the Restorative Night Cream and this one is going to give you that boost of hydration that you need and your skin, again, just soaks it up and it looks very replenished in the morning. Okay, so for my last step in the morning time is, of course, a sunscreen. I use sunscreen every single day. I don't go a day without it, no matter what, if the sun's not out, nothing, or if I'm even not even gonna really be outside, I still use it. I just make it a part of my routine. I make it a habit, because it's really good to protect your skin. And one, I have been loving this one from Dime, you guys. Oh my God, this one is so good. So this is their Wonder Screen. It's an SPF 30 in it. It's 19% zinc. It does not give you that white cast that some of those sunscreens do give you. I hate it when they do that, especially like for your man, if they're using it and they just have this white I guess all on their face. Yeah, I, I just don't like that. So this one blends beautifully into the skin 
doesn't leave that white cast. It even actually gives you a pretty little glow to the skin too, as you can see right there, which is amazing. So I love to use this and it doesn't give you that greasy feel either. It's nice and lightweight and it goes great under makeup. So I, I love this one. This one is an awesome sunscreen because I've been like trying out a few different ones right now and this one right now is definitely like my top fave. Again, because it doesn't leave that white cast and it's so thin and lightweight that it goes great under your foundation. Last but not least in the bundle, you definitely need something that's going to exfoliate the skin. So we have the Whipped Exfoliating Mask. This is lactic acid and salicylic acid. So this is great. You can use this two to three times a week. It's going to really exfoliate the skin, help get off all those dead skin cells, make your skin feel nice and baby smooth and it just makes you feel really refreshed. It also can double as a hydration mask, which is another big plus, because you don't really think of exfoliating as going to make you hydrated, but in this one, it does. It makes you feel so good. I just take a little brush in there and I just put it all on my face and make it look really pretty and I sit there, I work on my computer for a little bit, about like 10, 15 minutes and then I take this off and I, what I do is I take a warm washcloth and I just slowly like kind of very gently kind of do circular motions off my skin and it helps exfoliate and it helps get it off and it's just awesome. So I love this. This is a great part in the bundle as well. So that is the whole TLC bundle. I've been using these products for some time. I've been loving them. I highly recommend them. Again, you can get 20% off with Madison 20 or just click the link down below and that will take you right to the website. It will already apply the code for you. But they have other products on there that you guys can check out as well. I know they just came out with a lip balm too that I can't wait to try. So yeah, I definitely recommend them. They're awesome. Again, the link is down below. So now, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into your guys' questions for Disneyland. Okay, so the first question is, what is the best age for Disneyland for your little ones? So I have taken them as young as three months old all the way to three and a half years old because Riley is about to turn four in October. I would say the sweet spot is about three years old because that's when they really start to understand what Disneyland is and they just get so excited over it. Like they know the characters. It's just when they're really understanding it all. And also when they're around 40 inches tall because when they hit 40 inches tall, that's when they can ride majority of the rides there. So it really also comes down to the child because not all of them are as much as daredevils and stuff. Cause I know Kinsley, she was not a fan of the rides. Riley, when I first took her, she was 10 months old and she loved the rides. Like I put her on Pirates of the Caribbean, strapped to me in a baby carrier, front row, did not even care. She loved it. She loved rides. Kinsley, I tried to put her on rides like the two times that I took her, hated it. Every baby is different, but I would say the best age is around three years old or like 40 inches tall. I think that's like the best time to take them. Question number two is how long of a day do I do with each age? Like what do I recommend? So if you do not have a hotel and you're just going there for the day, I would get there right at opening around eight. We usually get there about 9.30, but I live about an hour and a half away and we have annual passes, so it, it's okay. Like it doesn't matter if that our days are a little shorter but we get there about 9.30 and then I like to leave with Riley around four. That is our sweet spot right there, no later than five because I even remember the last time I took Kinsley there, at five o'clock Kinsley was done. Like she was so over, it's overstimulated, like they're overstimulated and yeah. If you have a hotel room though, I would recommend going back midday and getting out of the environment so that way they can rest and kind of recoup for a couple hours and then you can go back out and that might make them last a little bit longer. But if you're just going for the day and you got a little one, just prepare that they tend to get done around five o'clock. So that's why my sweet spot to get out is about four o'clock. But yeah, that's what I would recommend. Okay, so the next question is, what is GD Plus and how do you use it? So there are two things that I wanna tell you before you go to the park. One, bring a portable charger. You're gonna be on your phone the whole time through the Disneyland app and you're gonna kill your battery. They have charging stations where you can go purchase them for $30 and you can like swap them out for a newly charged one. They suck. They don't really charge your phone. It's horrible. I did it. It was a waste of money. 
Um, so I definitely recommend making sure that you pack one with you. And then number two is you wanna get very familiar with the Disneyland app before you even go, so that way you can be like quick with everything. So what Genie Plus is, is it's replacing FastPass. So you used to go in there to like the rides and scan your ticket and get a little ticket and you can come back at a different time and go through a special line so you don't have to wait as long. Well, now they're making you pay for it, so stupid. So you have to pay an additional $20 per ticket that you want Genie Plus for. Another thing is, is that you can't purchase it until you are checked in and standing inside the park. That's another thing. So right when you get into the park, I literally pull to the side, I go through, I purchase Genie Plus for both me and Riley because it is a must have if you're going to Disneyland. If you're going to California Adventure Park, honestly, I would not recommend it because there wasn't really many rides that we could use it on for me and Riley. Plus they make you pay an additional fee to get onto the Cars ride and to get onto Spider-Man Web Slingers to go through their lightning lane. It's like $15 extra per ticket to go on those rides and Genie Plus is not included in there. So that really sucks. So I just would not even recommend it for over there. By the way, this is how you do it. Let's say if I'm on the map right here, and then I go to Matterhorn. You'll see the LL, that's Lightning Lane. You click on that and it will take you here and you can purchase, you can see Genie Plus. So you click Book Experience, you select the tickets that you want and you confirm party and boom, you're on the Lightning Lane. So what I do with these is my best tip is to find the rides that are like nearly immediate to where say it's 12 o'clock right now, I wanna find one that's available for me at 12.05 or 1210, something that's really close. So then what I do is I'll book that for 1205. All right, let's walk there. It will pop up right here on your upcoming plans and it will say redeem. You hit redeem, you go in and you just slide your phone and it scans the barcode and boom, you hop on, like you hop right into that lightning lane. So right when you're in that lightning lane, I will immediately go back to the map and I'll be like, okay, we're gonna go on another ride here and I will book my next experience. like immediately like while we're still in line because once you scan it you're re you're ready to book your next one so that's how i get us to go on so many rides and not wait in any lines and i always book rides that are like right then and there like ready for us to go on so that is genie plus and that's how you use it the next question that we can kind of segue into is what are the rides that i go to first and what's my usual game plan i've got like that same game plan every single time we go that's why we've got it down to a system so right when I get into the park, I purchase Genie Plus for both of us. Then what I do is I go to the Star Wars ride on the map, and this is Rise of the Resistant ride. This is the one that is not included in Genie Plus, so you have to pay an additional $20 per ticket. I know it's insane, but Riley loves this ride, so I do it for her every time. So once I have that booked, I then focus on Tomorrowland. That's where we go first because you can't use Lightning Lane on any of the Fantasyland rides, which sucks, and Riley doesn't really ride much of those rides. We kind of focus on the bigger ones. So we go to Tomorrowland, and we focus on, usually Star Tours is like immediate, so I book Star Tours as we're walking, and we hop right on that one, and then when we get into Star Tours line, I book Astro Blasters, hop right on that one, and then if, Space Mountain now, it's like, that one's booking up super fast too, so I don't even bother much with that one anymore. Um, but we'll do that, and then by that time, it'll be almost lunchtime, so then I will get our food order done at Pizza Planet, because that's where usually I will eat. And what I do is I book my order in line at After Blasters, and when I'm like, I literally, right when I get off the ride, I say I'm here, because you have to click like two buttons. You have to you know, they say preparing order, then you have to say I'm here and then it takes longer. So I say I'm here and by the time that we're off the ride and walking there and there, it's ready. And then as we're eating, I will start booking our next experiences. So then we're pretty much done with Tomorrowland at that time. If I can get us on Space Mountain, I will, but that's not like a must have for us. When I'm doing that, I book us on Thunder Mountain. So we head over to Thunder Mountain because she loves Choo Choo. We hop on Thunder Mountain. By the time that we're done with Thunder Mountain, it's about time to be heading to the Star Wars land, which is right there. So we head over to Star Wars land, we go on Rise of the Resistance, um, and then I will book the Smuggler's Run for us. And then 
After that, we'll kind of head over to It's a Small World. Then we'll hit up the carousel and Fantasyland like as we're going through. Actually, after Thunder Mountain or after Rise of the Resistance, it depends on how the like the times land. That's when it's gonna be about nap time for Riley. So then she'll take her nap, I'll shop a little bit, and then as I wake her up, we're hitting the other ride. So that's kind of like how our game plan goes. The next question that I have here is, what are the best rides for toddlers? So again, this is actually very like personal to each each toddler. There's some kids that love like the thrill rides and love the loud rides and all that, and there's some kids that don't. So it really comes down to your child. For Riley, she, I would say they love, I think every kid would love It's a Small World. Um, that one's a big must. The Carousel, they love that. Dumbo and the Rockets. Astro Blasters are a good one with them. Um, Star Tours, they might like. Uh, you, I mean, you gotta be kind of careful with Thunder Mountain. It just depends on the child, if they like it or not. Riley likes it. Also the Fantasyland rides, they're kind of dark and really loud. So I don't know if all every toddler is gonna like that one. Like I know that Riley would kind of go like this when she when I brought her on there when she was like two and a half. She was kind of like, eh. Um, she was fine with it, but it's just, I could just tell it's loud and it's just a lot. Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, Haunted Mansion is another good one. Um, those are some good rides for toddlers. Like Winnie the Pooh is actually, Winnie the Pooh is kind of loud and a little much, but I think those ones are some good rides for toddlers. Um, and also by the way, any ride that does not have a height requirement, you can bring a baby on. All right, so those were a few of your guys' questions for Disneyland. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you have any other questions that I did not cover, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Also, make sure to follow me over on Instagram at Madison Miller, and that's where I'm constantly like, you know, if we do these Q and A's, I have you guys submit your questions over there. So make sure you're following and keeping up with stories there. And yeah, give the video a thumbs up. Another big thank you to Dime Beauty for sponsoring a portion of this video. I'm so excited to be working with them. Again, don't forget to use the code Madison20. And also there's a link down below that will already apply that code for you that you guys can check out their products with and shop. So definitely recommend them. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.